Originally this week, I was going to talk about Ansu Fadi. The 17-year-old is toppling records, and while it's important not to overhype the player, it's also important to recognize and enjoy the history we're seeing. Instead, this week has seen nothing but chaos as Barcelona failed to sign a striker, lost his money Dembele for the rest of the season to injury, and saw multiple conflicts between players, between players and directors, and I guess you can say between Kules too. But that's always happening. So today, we're trying to figure out if Barcelona really is in crisis. Hi, I'm Dan Hilton, and this is the Barcelona Podcast YouTube Exclusive. It's hard to know where to start because everything is so connected. It's a chicken or the egg situation with not signing a number nine to replace Luis Suarez and Usmane Dembele dealing with injury issues. The bigger thing we're talking about here is how the club has conducted business for the last two years and how this window does feel like the end of the long and winding road and deals that didn't work out and other clubs and agents taking advantage of negotiations. This whole story started all the way back when Neymar chose to leave the club. Players have the right to make that decision, but I've been on record a number of times saying that while obviously he's talented enough to return, I'm always going to be uncomfortable with the way he left the club and honestly a little bitter about the tough spot he put the club in. What came next is all on the club though. With 220 million euros burning a hole in their pocket, they went out and got Usmane Dembele from Borussia Dortmund and Felipe Coutinho from Liverpool the following January. Time for some other names. Nelson Semedo, Gerard De La Feu, Yuri Mina, Marlon, Paulinho, Malcolm, Clement Langley, Artur, Arturo Vidal, Jason Murillo, Jean-Claire Tadebo, Kevin Prince Boateng, Antoine Griezmann, Frankie de Jong, Neto, Junior Firpo, Emerson, Musa Wage. Eight of that list are still at the club. Ten are not. So many misses in the transfer market have added up, and now Barcelona seem to be out of money and lacking depth. Losing Luis Suarez for the season and replacing Ernesto Valverde with Kike Setien was always going to make things difficult. But this is the week that signs of cracks are showing, and it's becoming more and more difficult to figure out what's a big deal and what's a non-story. The biggest deal, though, is that Barcelona didn't sign a striker in the winter window. We can disagree with it, but there are certainly reasons for it. After the sales of so many youngsters deemed surplus to requirements, it's pretty obvious that the club needed money in a bad way. As for the new number nine, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, Timo Werner, Latoura Martinez, Edinson Cavani, Wissam Ben Yedder, Rodrigo, none of these players left their clubs, and I'm not sure they were ever really available right now. We know the Rodrigo business broke down, and we know it's because Valencia wouldn't take anything less than more than Rodrigo is worth, and therein lies the issue. Since the Neymar transfer, clubs sense Barcelona's desperation to surround Messi with top talent, and they take advantage of that in negotiations. The number of top-level players that can handle playing at Barca isn't a long list, and it gets smaller if Barcelona want to avoid certain agents. They conceded to Jorge Mendes in the Francisco Trincao deal, and it's been rumored that the club is careful of working with Mino Raiola. If they don't want to work with Riola, they lose out on players like Matias De Ligt, Erling Haaland, Daniel Malin, Paul Pogba, Marco Verratti, and many more. How do you pull in the best talent in the world when so many of them are represented by agents that cost so much it makes it difficult to sign anybody else? For two years this has been the trend, but needing to wait until the summer to sign a striker, coupled with the season-ending injury to Ousmane Dembele, is a worst-case scenario. The club is out of spending money, and now the first team looks out of players. It's bad timing. Awful timing. Setien lost Suarez before he ever had him, and now the same goes for Dembele. With tensions high, this week we've seen a conflict between players, which I don't chalk up to much of anything, so that's one of those non-stories, maybe just a competitive training session. Maybe at the worst possible time though, Eric Abidal gave an interview where he spoke about everything from Valverde's dismissal to the failure of the transfer window. His answer on the window was clear. Citing the failed Boateng deal, he said that he wanted to bring in a quality number 9 over the summer, when the stars are available. The one thing I actually agreed with was that he mentioned that Carlos Perez was sold and will basically be replaced by Alas Callado. Callado may be playing slightly out of position on the wing, but he's played there plenty with Barcelona B, and I honestly believe that he's more consistent with Perez and should do well in a shot with the first team. But what's getting the headlines is the line that Abidal said that the players didn't really like not working so hard. And I'm paraphrasing there. This is the line that got Messi to respond on Instagram, which is shocking in itself. Currently dealing with a thigh injury but playing through it, it was just that moment for the Argentine to speak up. Messi is clearly not happy that this criticism so often falls on his shoulders. Not the board, not Abidal, most often not his teammates. But much like LeBron James, Messi is seen as a decision maker at the club when he doesn't have that power. 
He doesn't pick the board. He doesn't pick the directors. He doesn't pick the manager or choose his teammates. But it's supremely naive to say that his words don't have weight. It's a relationship between Messi and Albidal is as fractured as it seems, and Messi is capable of leaving this summer, a full year before potential elections when a new board could be brought in, Abidal may not be employed for much longer. But if Messi's issues go to the board, then what happens first? It's unbelievable to me that these are the questions currently being asked. These are the questions that media, with little understanding of Barca from day to day, get to fill their shows with. As kool it's hard not to take sides. These conversations should have all taken place in private. Not a good look for anybody. The last thing that needs to be addressed this week is the Usmani Dembele injury update. A complete proximal hamstring tear should keep him out of action until the end of the year. This could be the end of his Barca career, and I'm absolutely gutted for him. Remember, he dreamed of playing for Barca, and to have so much promise be wasted is beyond unfortunate. With Suarez also injured and Carlos Pérez sold, Abidal was honest that Alex Callado is the next man up. Now this is where the real argument amongst kool begins. Most kool say they want La Masia players to get their chance but then they aren't willing to take the lumps when those players need to be trusted. The lack of a number 9 coming from La Masia is frustrating, but as I said, I believe that Callado could be the backup right winger, and Barca is just going to need to live with that for now. Another option is Barca find a replacement forward within Spain in a 15-day window that they have to ask permission to sign. La Liga and Copa del Rey would be the only place that they can play, but an extra body like Lucas Perez, Borja Iglesias, Angel Rodriguez, or Christian Stuani, all of which have their own issues, and potentially not all of which are available, are better than no one, I guess, even though Barca want to avoid another Boateng situation. The final possibility is seeing more of Sergio Roberto on the right wing, something we've seen before and very well could see again with Nelson Semedo back at right back in a 4-3-3. Don't be surprised if this is what you see the most for the rest of the season. For those familiar with this channel, this was kind of an odd YouTube exclusive, not one of my regular list or history features. But it almost feels like a list of calamities, and every time the world is talking about Messi leaving Barcelona, it needs to be discussed. We'll get back to those Ansu Fati records in a future video. But in the meantime, it'd be a big help if you could hit that like button and subscribe. And as always, until next time, Forza Barca.